this is Renee the Fox, and today we're doing a retrospective on the Five Nights at Freddy's series. This is part 2. Part 1 dealt with the original quadrilogy, part 3 will deal with the AAA games, and this part will deal with Sister Location, Pizzeria Simulator, and Ultimate Custom Night. So, basically, the series ended, but then Scott brought it back. Partially because he wanted to answer some questions left in the lore. Partially because he just enjoys making these games. This new game is a huge step. There are big changes everywhere. The gameplay, the music, the graphics, the writing. Right from the start we get a big cutscene with voice acting. This is the first actual voice actor that wasn't just Scott. What a chilling reveal to hear the name after at the end. At least it is if you read the book. I should probably talk about the books. Again, there's not much for me to say since I'm a video game maker and not a book writer. And also the books take place in a different continuity. Eh. That's a quick thing. Uh, the novel trilogy is pretty good, got some nice scares and some cool plot twists. Uh, I like how it introduces some concepts that tie into the games and help us solve the lore, even if the books have their own separate canon. I enjoy Fazbear Frights, but my problem is how <sighs> detached it feels. Like, with the novel trilogy, you can tell it took place in an alternate universe, but the characters and events clearly tied into the games. Also, the novel trilogy has a single continuous story. Fazbear Frights, on the other hand, is a series of unrelated short stories, and half of them feel completely unrelated to the main series. Like, some of them are basically just regular scary stories, but you make the creepy demon sing a robot, I mean, an animatronic. And none of this makes the stories bad, just not really my cup of tea. If Fazbear Frights is finished, when I have more money and time, I'll probably go and buy and read the whole thing. But who knows when the series will finish. Okay, apparently it finished back in November. Alright, I'll buy it eventually, I guess. <clears throat> back to the game. Gameplay starts off in this elevator, and wow, this looks fantastic! Like, the third and fourth games look good, but this is next level. A voice comes in to talk to you, and oh cool, another voice actor. This writing is great. Like, the first four games were occasionally funny, but it wasn't until FNAF World that we got the classic Scott Cawthon humor that we saw back in Chipper and Sons. Like, okay, yeah, Exotic Butters was over memed by the fandom, but it's still great to see this humor in a mainline FNAF game. Anyways, you get into the main area and crawl through a vent into Baby's room, and ooh, the tension and horror as you deliver these controlled shocks and nothing happens, and then you crawl under the desk and... And now seems like a good time to talk about gameplay in this game and how it differs from the previous four. So I mentioned how the previous games had a problem with repetition between nights, where you're just doing the same thing and experiencing the same scares. This game has the opposite problem. Each night has you doing something completely different. This isn't a terrible idea per se, it does mean that each night keeps you on the edge of your seat because you don't know what to expect. But it also means that the gameplay can never really evolve in any way. Like, when I hid under the, this desk the first time, I was super excited to see how this would tie into the rest of the gameplay, and to see what would happen if I hid under the desk while something else was after me, only for hiding under the desk to be a mechanic that is never used ever again. So, what you get is five nights that are scary and fun in their own way, but don't have enough depth or evolution in difficulty or mechanics to be super interesting the way the other games could be. And then you get home and are treated to the best set of cutscenes in the whole game. Immortal and the Restless is genuinely some of the funniest shit. Again, I love seeing this humor. It even comes with more hints. What's not to love? On to night two. And unit explains that you need to go through Ballora's gallery as quickly as possible, and Circus Baby tells you that he's wrong. This is a really great setup. Like, it's sort of vague if Hand Unit is wrong because he's deliberately lying to get employees killed for their remnant, or if he's giving advice that would have been good before the remnant infused animatronics started to become self aware. Later, we see that it's the second option with how oblivious Hand Unit is towards what's going on, but the tension of the mystery is great. Further, we get Circus Baby establishing herself as a helpful person who has our best interests at heart and wants to see us survive this ordeal. Uh, seriously, I could do a whole thing on Baby's character, but yeah, later. So you slowly make your way down the hall. We get that scene that is simultaneously terrifying and funny when Hand Unit just starts blasting its voice at the quiet room asking why you're taking so long. <laughs> Great stuff. Then you get to Fun Time Freddy's room and power some stuff while convincing him not to kill you. It's okay. It's another thing I would have liked to see again in, the, in an evolved manner, only for it to never show up again. Next is night three. You're told to go through Funtime Auditorium to Parts and Services to perform a repair task. 
If you want, you can ignore this and go to Baby's room to hear a speech about a party she performed at that ended with screaming. Great. Anyways, hand you it tells you to flash the lights as little as possible, and I will always love the realization that you are once again supposed to do the opposite of what hand unit tells you, just like in Ballora Gallery. So you get to the end and you perform repairs on Fun Time Friday, which, yeah, it's fun. Also one of the few instances of a gameplay thing that gets to evolve and show up later on. At the end of the night, Fun Time Foxy jumps you and Baby drags you away to the scooping room, which starts night four. Yeah, Night 4 has hands down the worst game design in the entire series. I'll be honest, one of the main reasons I started this retrospective is just so I could complain about this night. Let's start with the positives. The story and the atmosphere here are amazing. The way Circus Baby says, I kidnapped you. Oh, good! The fact that you're in a springlock suit and there's a little gameplay tip saying press A and D to wiggle back and forth like, nope. But then these spider ballerinas are crawling and you need to get them off. This is straight up terrifying and I love it. I love the fact that we get to see Baby doing something sinister, but she's doing so to show us the scuba, to show us what these animatronics are going through. You start to feel bad for Baby. You acknowledge that she did a bad thing, but maybe she had a good reason for doing so. Then the story stops and the gameplay begins and... Ugh. Okay, so the goal is seemingly simple. You need to prevent these mini arenas from killing you by wiggling them off. But if you wiggle too much, the spring logs will kill you. So here's what happened to me when I first played. The mini arenas started crawling towards my internal organs. I wiggle relentlessly. It doesn't fall off. It gets inside and kills me. I try again. The same thing happens. I try it a third time. Again, the mini arena kills me. No matter how hard I wiggle, this mini arena kills me. So I finally got tired of dying immediately, so I look up. How to get this mini arena off of me? <sighs> so, I don't even know where to start. I'm just gonna explain how this night works, and from there I'll explain all the game design sins being committed by this night. So your goal is to wiggle off these mini-renas without dying, but not all of the mini-renas. The ones crawling on the sides, going nowhere in particular, will kill you if they successfully crawl away from you. The mini-renas crawling into your body, where your internal organs are, are completely harmless. At no point does the game imply that there are two types of mini arenas, one of which is deadly and one of which is decorative, and even if you did figure that out, how would you guess which is which? Ah, yes, clearly the people trying to chew out my intestines and rip off my dick are just for scenery. This is an issue, but it's somewhat subjective. This next thing I have to say, however, is objectively bad design. So there are two things that can kill you in this section, the mini arenas and the spring locks getting too loose. If the mini arenas kill you, you're treated to a jump scare from the mini arena who killed you. If the spring locks puncture your lungs and spleen, you're treated to a jump scare from a mini arena who did not kill you. This is straight up just the game lying to the player. The game is telling you that you got killed by one thing, when you actually got killed by something else that is giving the player false info, and it makes it very hard to figure out what you need to do. Previously, I praised the jump scares because they tell you what killed you, which in turn tells you how to improve. That doesn't work when there's only one jump scare, regardless of the source of death. So, you wiggle as hard as you can to get the mini arena off you, but it's never enough, no matter how hard you wiggle. Because even though the game is directly telling you that you didn't wiggle hard enough, what it actually means is you wiggle too much. This is just such bad game design. Third and final issue with this night, there is zero indication that you can tighten the spring locks by clicking on them. There are full indications in the form of a pop-up that you can wiggle by pressing A and D. The implication here is that you have to wiggle a little, but not a lot, managing your wiggles so you get rid of the mini arenas without activating the spring locks. This also makes sense. You're stuck in a spring lock suit and can't move at all beyond little wiggles. But I also have the ability to tighten these spring locks somehow? What exactly am I tightening these springs with? My mind? 
There's no pop-up explaining that you can tighten these springs. There's no indication of how you would go about tightening the spring locks in-game. There's no real-world justification for how I'm able to tighten these springs. I probably sound like I'm being petty and nitpicky, but the thing is there are so many problems. The second problem is the only objectively bad one. The first and third probably wouldn't piss me off so much if it wasn't all of them coming together to be this unholy amalgam of poor design choices. Okay, mm, night five. Yeah, good night. Yeah, okay, okay. So, we get the absolutely horrifying wonder of taking a look into both rooms, seeing dead technicians, and having Han Unit be like, Yep, there's something there. Must be the robots. Great. So Baby asks to see you in parts and services, you get a tense walk down the hall. Nothing can kill you, but you don't know that on a first playthrough. So you get to parts and services, and remove the chip from Baby and make your way back, with Baby directing you so Ballora won't kill you. Then, all of a sudden, you end up in the scooping room. Circus Baby gives her short little speech, and you see this... thing from behind the window. And you realize... Oh. And so, we come to the bad ending. Your innards are scooped out, and a fusion of the fun times wear your body like a suit so they can escape. Don't hold it against them. You don't know what they've been through. So, for having beat the game, you unlock the extras menu. There's a secret here, allowing you to play the death minigame whenever you want. This minigame is an abstract representation of Baby's story on night 3, leading up to the horrifying ice cream deployment. You'll probably guess after Baby's story that this would happen, but getting to actually see it is great. The only complaint is that the number of kids you see doesn't match the number of the story. A eh, super minor nitpick, just something that could have been neat. Uh, completing this minigame also unlocks a key card. Alright. Going back to the extra menu, you can see various blueprints of each of the robots and of the building. Putting all the pieces together, we can determine that Afton built these robots specifically to kill children and harvest their remnant, only for Baby to kill Afton's daughter, Elizabeth. Also, Funtime Foxy looks like that squirrel from Ice Age. Also, also, there's a secret room over here, and maybe we can open it with that key card we just got. Let's go! Okay, back to night five, and we go down the other path, and ooh, sweet, a Five Nights at Freddy-style office. Really glad to be doing one of these again. Mm, not a lot to say, it's a pretty simple office with just one animatronic bee lining down one of three paths. The biggest issue here is with where this game auto-saves. Whenever you fail at the office section, you get sent back to the center area, which means you have to walk all the way back to parts and services, complete the entire parts and services section, and then walk all the way to the office. I typed it out once, doing all that takes about 5 minutes. That's a 5 minute wait time, every time you want to even attempt this office section. And that's assuming you speed run through fixing baby without making any mistakes, because if you make a single mistake there, you have to start those 5 minutes all over again. This is frankly ridiculous. Imagine if every time you wanted to play Night 6 in FNAF 1, there was a mandatory 5 minute wait period. Imagine that if I said that in order to get to the next part of the video, you had to sit there and wait for 5 minutes first. Yeah, that would be ridiculous and annoying. Anyways, despite that, I love this section so much. I love the 1983 easter egg, I love the plush of the walkie-talkie, I love Circus Baby trying to reason, then with you finally resorting to speaking with the voice of your dead sister inside her. It's great stuff. Then you finish the night, and you get a cool, unfortunately, not canon cutscene. Michael, that's it's my turn to watch TV. After beating that, you unlock Custom Night. Custom Knight puts you in the same office as before, but this time you have to face off against 10 of the animatronics seen throughout the game. I guess technically you're also facing off against all of these in the canon story, but this time you're facing them as individuals and not them as an amalgamation. Now, unlike in FNAF 2, each of these 10 animatronics have unique mechanics. You're required to pay attention to various audio cues and visual cues, and most of the cameras are actually needed instead of just one. Some of the stuff like clicking on bonnet can be annoyingly fiddly, but once you get the muscle memory of it down, it's not bad. I also love having controls be based on keyboard input instead of mouse. Much easier, for me at least. After you complete each preset, you are rewarded with a cutscene showcasing Michael Afton walking down the street and becoming progressively more rotted until finally Ennard has enough and spews themselves out of his body. You won't die, you won't die, you won't die, you won't die. 
You won't, you won't die. die. Oh. I straight up thought Baby was lying when she said that. Okay. Cool. I'm a remnant zombie. By beating all 20 modes, you get the final cutscene which showcases Michael vowing to find his father, followed by Springtrap emerging from the wreckage. This led to a lot of people to assume that Michael is Springtrap, which... Can you blame them? Like, I get that purple guy doesn't literally have purple skin, it just appears that way because he's always in the shadow, and Michael has purple skin even in broad daylight, but that really wasn't obvious at the time. It wasn't until Scott confirmed on Reddit that Purple Guy's skin wasn't purple that most people realized it. Christ, my trap versus Will Trap Bromos broke the fandom apart. Next we have Pizzeria Simulator, which, like FNAF World, is a relaxing spin-off where you make pizza and- OH CHRIST! Sorry, I know we all know about the, the, this twist at this point, but I still love it. Anywho, on to the gameplay. Gameplay here is divided into three main parts. There's managing the pizzeria, salvaging the animatronics, and surviving the night. In order to manage the pizzeria, you have to buy various attractions and upgrades. These include decorations, games, and animatronics. Each of these comes with a variety of stats, which increases the amount of money you can earn. Atmosphere increases the amount of new customers who arrive. Entertainment increases the amount of customers who return for the next day. Revenue increases the amount of money customers will spend. Liability, on the other hand, increases the chance that you get sued and lose money, while health and safety decreases this chance. There are further considerations. While decorations will only increase stats, games can be tested by the players. This gives the player some nice and fun gameplay with promises of big rewards in the form of money or free attractions. A select few of them also have hidden lore associated with them, but I'll talk about them later. Minigames also give us some more of that beautiful dark humor. I will... <laughs> I will never get tired of that. The animatronics are similar to decorations, but if you buy and install a full set of them, you are given bonus money and a badge on the title screen. Overall, the pizzeria section is fun, but it feels pretty basic. It's okay. I absolutely love the fact that this game has risk-reward mechanics with stuff you can do like salvage animatronics or get advertisements, both of which give you extra money for pizzeria mode, but make surviving the night much harder. This seems like a good idea, but this game has multiple endings, so the optimal play is incredibly obvious. If you're going for the non-completion endings, grab the advertisements that don't salvage anything. If you're going for completions, don't get ads, do salvage. The risk-reward then becomes completely non-existent. So overall, the pizzeria section is a fun distraction from the main game, but nothing to write home about. And furthermore, I wish there was more interaction between how you play through the pizzeria and how you play through the night with meaningful choices to make that significantly impact both modes. Ah oh, well. Uh, salvaging is also pretty basic, but it's short and it serves the purpose it needs to. Every night you're given the option to salvage a variety of faces that are familiar, yet not so familiar. If you salvage them, you're given an opportunity for a cash bonus for pizzeria mode, but the animatronic you salvage will start murdering you in night mode. Again, if you're going for completion slash lore keeper, definitely choose to salvage all five animatronics. If you're going for any other ending, don't salvage them. The gameplay requires you to listen to a tape and cross out some checks on a piece of paper. As the salvage progresses, the animatronics will start to get agitated. If they get too agitated, agitated, they'll jump scare you and run off to the halls of the pizzeria. This doesn't kill you, but it does cause you to lose out on the money bonus. In order to calm down an agitated animatronic, you must administer a controlled shock by tasing them. If you taste them too many times, their wiring will be damaged and you'll only get half as much money. I don't know why Henry cares about damaging the wiring, seeing as he's going to destroy them all in a giant fire, but whatever. Overall, these sections are just engaging enough without overstaying their welcome and add a nice bit of tension to the game. Now, let's discuss surviving the night. Oh boy. Unlike previous games, there is no 6am time limit that determines when the night ends. Instead, you are given a series of tasks to complete at your computer, and you may then leave once you've finished every task. This means that instead of waiting patiently for the night to end, the time scale is entirely up to you. 
even more so because you can use your money to buy computer upgrades that make the tasks complete faster and quieter. Faster tasks are obviously important, but the quietness is arguably more important for two reasons. First, it allows you to more easily hear animatronics crawling inside your vents. Secondly, it makes you quieter to the animatronics, which makes it harder for them to hear you. This is one of the main new mechanics introduced here, noise levels. The animatronic can hear the sounds you make and will move towards them the louder it is. This means you have to manage completing tasks and running fans for, with the animatronic's movements. When you hear something sneaking into the vents, turn everything off and look in the vents. If you pick the right one, the robo-killer leaves and you get to live. If not, then you just have to hope they didn't hear you. There's also now a temperature meter. If the room gets too hot, you'll straight up die of heat exhaustion. The air conditioning decreases the temp, but as previously mentioned, it makes a fair amount of noise. So far, I like the way everything is set up. There's a nice give and take with each of the mechanics. My issue here comes from the animatronics in the map. Unlike the previous games, the map only gives you a vague sense of where the animatronics are. There aren't any cameras. This isn't inherently bad. FNAF 4 didn't have a camera or map, but each animatronic in that game was distinct from each other. In this game, there's, there is functionally no difference between each of them. This game gives you very little information, which I'm guessing is there to increase the tension, but it just makes the nights feel boring and samey. Like, I guess getting a new animatronic makes the night harder, but it doesn't change anything the way animatronics activating on later nights did in previous games. Honestly, I'm not sure what you would need to do to fix this. It feels like we need a complete remake of these mechanics. And yeah, now feels like a good time to talk about the story. I suppose we should bring up the elephant in the room. The animatronics. Of all the games, this one has been the most under fire with complaints and redesign. Going down the list! Firstly, I like Scrap Baby's design. Scrap Baby is simultaneously a small child, and also a robot who is designed to commit mass murder. Scrap Baby is the prince's crown of roller skates that fits a child's sense of what's cool. In the middle clone, the circus baby face indicates how the child murdering AI is overtaking her personality. My issue with the design, which is kind of also an issue with the gameplay, is how underutilized this design is. You actually can't see the claw or the roller skates anywhere in the main game. Without cameras, you barely get a chance to see any of these guys. Seriously, Scrap Baby has roller skates. Make her zoom around faster than the others. She has a giant claw. Make her chop your head off when she kills you. Scrap Baby honestly just feels like a big missed opportunity. Molten Freddy is... whatever. Little Spaghetti Monster from Sister Location is wearing a mask now. There was an opportunity to make it a confused mess of personalities from each of the three robots, along with who knows how many souls come from the remnant that flows through those metal veins. Instead, it's just Funtime Freddy. The Funtimes kicked Baby out because she's too domineering, only for Freddy to dominate anyway. Actually, the reason Baby was kicked out wasn't stated anywhere in the game, only in the promotional material. Scrap Trap is... <sighs> okay. I don't hate Scrap Trap. Looking at fan response, it's clear that what people wanted is Spring Trap, but slightly different. It's understandable. Spring Trap's design is iconic, but I think that it shows a misunderstanding of what Scott was going for. Scott has stated that one of the things he tries to do when making these games is solve the questions left by the previous games. In FNAF 4, we see a Spring Bonnie costume. This costume shares multiple similarities with Toy Bonnie. Distinct muzzle, plastic nose, buck teeth, cotton tail. This led to a lot of debate. Is this the same Spring Bonnie costume as Spring Trap, just looking slightly different due to Atari sprites? Is this a different costume? Is this a toy animatronic? What does this thing look like? Here we see Afton wearing a new outfit that perfectly fits this sprite, while also not being a toy suit. Mystery solved! Some people think it's weird that Afton would remove one bunny suit just to put on another one. To which I say, he didn't remove the costume, it was destroyed in the fire. And the reason he put on a new one is because wearing the first suit is canonically what makes him feel safest. It's a huge part of his identity. Having said all that, I think the design is pretty ugly. The weird, partially mummified flesh and lips, the eyes, the bumps that are just perfectly rounded squares, and just like Scrap Baby, he's got a spike arm that he never uses. Lefty is... Uh, Lefty's actually fine. Maybe make it more black and white? 
give him buttons instead of the star. The fact that his eyes are yellow and not silver feels like a missed opportunity. Maybe instead of having a music box in the microphone, give the office computer an MP3 player that plays lullabies. Have it calm down Lefty, but make it easier for others to hear you. Eh, yeah, Lefty's fine. Going back to the topic of missed opportunities, all of these animatronics wander the halls and occasionally make statements. These statements are just random observations. We have four animatronics here, each with unique personalities, and totally different relationships between each other. There's so many opportunities for these animatronics to talk to each other, build up their character and relationships. Yeah, but no, let's just say random and name shit. Uh, then we get the minigames. Rudy Mace gives us an opportunity to see how William Afton manipulates his victims into following him back into the back row to kill them gruesomely. Basic stuff. Midnight Motorist has a hidden path that showcases... What the fuck does this showcase? Is, is this William? Why isn't he purple? Like, my assumption is that this is meant to show that William's skin isn't purple, it just looks purple in certain lighting. But if that's the case, there are way better ways to show that, as I once demonstrated. But of course, that's assuming this is William. It would seem to be William's car, but this theoretically could be William's father. Which would make this guy William. Or this guy? Who left the furry footprints? Is, is this Henry? Is this Henry and he's Henry's dad? Is this guy William's dad? Scott, please, for the love of God, just give us some hints. What's up with this mound? Is this like the twisted animatronics burying themselves? Is this a single grave for William's wife? She's dead just cause? And she's not Ballora because there's no ballerina on the Afton family poster. What the fuck is Junior's? Egg Baby doesn't give a minigame itself, but it does unlock a cutscene in the office. This cutscene comes with three blueprints, which states that the scooper is used to inject something into the fun times. There's a device called a Rask, which is used to simulate something, and Lefty was designed to lure and encapsulate something. Now obviously these blueprints are super vague, but they give us clues, which, when combined with the final cutscene and other scenes, allow us to put the pieces back together. Along with the blueprints, we also get a speech from Henry explaining how William lured the animatronics and dismantled them. Using information from the books and from Candy Cadet's stories, we can deduce that William melted down the animatronics and injected their remnant into the fun times, leaving Molten Freddy as an amalgam of the kids killed by William and by these three. And now is the time to say something controversial. Henry isn't referring to the FNAF 3 minigame. Yes. I believe William was trying to dismantle the OG so he could melt them for remnant, but he clearly didn't. Because he kinda died. He straight up did not have time to melt them. And Molten Freddy can't contain the souls of the OGs because they were already put to rest. But do you know who wasn't put to rest? Do you know who William had plenty of time and opportunity to dismantle and melt? The toys. I don't have anything to add to that, it's literally the only thing that makes sense. Anywho, the security puppet minigame asks you to protect the child with a green armband. But there isn't one, so then you play again. But there still isn't one, so you play a third time and- Oh! There she is! Oh no. Oh no. Oh no! Yeah, this one doesn't take a rocket scientist to decode. So, having done all that, you finish the last nine and get the final cutscene. Henry gives his final speech before putting everything to rest. All the pieces are together. Henry Emily, Charlie Emily, Michael Afton, Elizabeth Afton, all the people who William Afton hurt, and William Afton himself. I love this cutscene. The way it integrates the temperature meter from the gameplay of this story. The reveal that the puppet is Charlie trying to help everyone. The realization that this entire time the animatronics have been wandering the halls of a place that is meant to look like a pizzeria without being an actual pizzeria. It's a pizzeria simulator! And so, with that, this era is finally over, and everyone gets to go to heaven. Except for William. Fuck him. And now we get Ultimate Custom Night, the series' final hurrah, featuring every animatronic coming together one last time to kick this man in the nuts. I'm not gonna talk about the story too much, because beyond this being William's Hell as orchestrated by Cassidy's, there's not much to say. 
There are also cutscenes, but those don't give any real lore. William lured kids and killed them. Michael was an asshole to his brother. Yeah, these aren't telling us anything we haven't already figured out. It would be nice if these cutscenes gave us answers to any final questions the fandom has, like, are the toys haunted? Who is Shadow Freddy? What's the deal with Orange Guy? When does Sister Location take place? It's not a huge deal, it's just something I personally would have preferred. Now then, I haven't talked about the graphics or music too much because there's not a lot of deep things for me to say. I really like Scott's style of 3D models and Leon Riskin's music is always a joy to listen to. However, and I know most people have already said this, but I have to say, the jump scare animations in this game aren't very good. Like, we've seen the jump scares evolve over the course of this series, and then we get this game where half the jump scares just look like JPEGs zooming around the screen. At first I thought this was to reduce the file size, but no. Each frame of the jump scares is being stored as their own separate file. I suppose Scott just didn't have time to make 50 new jump scare animations, but there's really no shame in reusing old animations. It would have made the game look so much better. Alright, on to the gameplay. Previously I've talked about how FNAF 2 and Pizzeria Simulator had issues with their animatronics being too similar to each other, and here I am happy to say that almost all 50 animatronics have unique mechanics, and even the ones that have the same mechanics are different from each other in some way. There's a few exceptions, but I'm really impressed with the variety here. Granted, this game still has a problem of one camera being more important to others. In 50-20 mode, you only have to look at a single camera. The air ducts never need to be looked at beyond setting up an audio lure when you first start. The thing where most animatronics can only get in when you pull up a monitor, and most animatronics can't get in if you look at them, really makes this game easy in a way that feels awkward and weird. Then again, if it wasn't for that, people probably wouldn't be able to beat 50-20 mode. So I'm not going to complain too hard. Mm, that's pretty much all I have to say. Uh, also, beating every challenge should give you an infinite supply of power-ups so you don't have to grind while going for 50-20. And this final cutscene, while simple, is such a great way to close off the series. And with that, we finally got to the end of this series. Ah, oh, shit! Uh, hi everyone, this is, uh... Renee from the future, um, so, uh, I, 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 I deleted a bunch of files on my computer and put some stuff onto, uh, to an external hard drive so that I could buy and download Security Breach and play it, um, so I just wanted to kind of talk about part three of this retrospective, and it's probably going to take a while, if it ever comes out, um, because, you know, like I've, like all the other games in this series I've played, like, at least two or three times, you know, but, so it's like, I don't feel like I want to, I don't want to review Security Breach until I've played it more than once, and I don't feel like playing it again. I, I just, I just finished playing it, and I'm, I'm burnt, I'm burned out, not, and it's not just from the game, and it's not just from, from making these videos from a lot of stuff, but that's this is not important. But um, yeah, and it's like so. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I'm gonna make part three because I. I would first. I would need to play Security Breach again, and then I would also need to go through all the time and effort to write the script, record the script, edit the video, and I don't know if I have time for that. It's and it's and also it's like, I feel like it's not fair to. To, to review Security Breach because it's it's not finished. The game's not it's 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 just not finished. I uh, I would like to I don't know wait for, w wait for several because I feel like I I might just make a review and then like a month later like half the things I say in the review are just going to be completely invalidated by some new patch. You know so I it, it's kind of hard for me to. To make a review. You know, I feel like if I ever made a review, I'd want it to be for the final version. Whatever that may be. So there's that. Um, but yeah, I guess I just kind of wanted... I, I don't want to leave people completely hanging, so these are just some unscripted thoughts. That, you know, maybe if I ever make part three, I'll repeat some of these thoughts and maybe I won't. I don't know. But yeah, um... 
<laughs> yeah, Help Wanted, I really like uh, Help Wanted. Uh, there are definitely some parts where the sound design was complete shit. Uh, mostly in Curse of Dreadbear. Curse of Dreadbear is really bad sound design. With like some sound effects being like ten times louder than they should be and some being way... it's bad. And there was like some other gameplay shit in Curse of Dreadbear. Curse of Dreadbear wasn't good, but um, I liked the main Help Wanted. I liked... I like being able to play through. Oh, it's, it's like oh, it's FNAF, but but uh, better. <laughs> it really is just FNAF, but better. It's 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 exactly what I wanted. You you turn on the lights, and the animatronic who is walking in a completely different direction turns around and looks at you. It's like I love that. Uh, security breach. Um, yeah. Um, another reason why I don't know if I'm gonna do a review of security breach is because I feel like everyone's done a review of security breach, and I don't. I don't know if there's too much that I can say that hasn't already been said. You know, I, like, what could I say? Oh, I, I wish Vanny was in the game more. I wish he had more of a presence. I, I, I think the game would have been better if, if the Vanny meter had been fully implemented. That's, yeah. I, <laughs> you're not going to find a review that doesn't say that. I feel, I, you know, and I haven't, I haven't seen too many reviews. Like I said, you know, I've been trying to avoid spoilers. I've been... And I just finished the game, so. So yeah, I mean, I just, but just based on some things I've seen, you know, because I occasionally had to go onto the Reddit because I kept the game kept glitching and soft locking. I was like, I had to go up like, how do I do this? And it's like, it turns out, oh well, you don't. It's like, it's, it's I, mm, you know, present. Like, how do I open this present? And it turns out, oh, it was just a regular present that just glitched and became unopened, or it became unopened out of nowhere, but then I couldn't open it because it was already open, but it was the model wasn't right. Um, you know, getting to the end of the DJ Music Man section and nothing happens. So, uh, I ended up, I got, like, like, no joke, I had to download, uh, the mod, the, or the, the debug, the debug menu, <laughs> so that I could actually beat the game because there's there were so many soft locks was, uh. but yeah i mean it's that it's you know vanny vanny it you know this this was their because it's like you get to because then you get the vanny ending where you save her you know but so then it's like it's like what like and that's the good ending so like if we get another FNAF game, is Vanny even gonna be in it? So it's kind of I don't know. It just felt like this was her one chance, and they fucking blew it by having her show up for a bit and then just fuck off for the rest of the game. And then there's the whole burn trap ending that has nothing to do with anything. It was so I hate the burn trap end. It's just, <laughs> like okay, so so William Afton uh, creates a copy of his consciousness and just a fucking drags up his rotten, burnt corpse and just <laughs> inserts his consciousness into his dead body. Why? It's so dumb. Like, why not? Like, if you're going to insert your consciousness into a new body, why not do it into a new body? With, and, you know, and, like, one that's fireproof. One that's fireproof. It's your one weakness. It's literally your one weakness is fire. <laughs> and, th and then it's like and then he he's like oh well now here's my master plan is I'm just gonna chill in this in this in this incinerator he just that's, that's all he does he just hangs out in an incinerator his one weakness is fire and he just hangs out in an incinerator it's so it's it's so dumb it doesn't make any sense it what what was what what, what was that? I, I hate, I, like, I 100% believe that this game would have been better if they had just completely removed everything relating to Burn Trap and all the effort that went into that, if that had gone into Vanny. Like, like, just that alone would have made the game feel like way less of a disappointment. Yeah, and, um, and also, like, stuff like, having characters interact with each other would have been great because there's like if it like because i feel like there's this whole setup of like gregory and like 
Freddy are like best friends or whatever, but Freddy is also friends with the other animatronics. But the other animatronics want to kill Gregory, and there's such there's such potential for conflict there, for because it's because it felt it felt like it felt like it was building up to some scene where Freddy has to make a choice between the other Glamrocks and Gregory, you know, like because because Gregory is essentially like maiming Freddy's friends, but that's only because they're trying to kill Gregory. Like there's this clear conflict between. Freddy's closest friends and it doesn't come to anything or have any meaning or it does it, there's no there's no scene of of Freddy having to make this the obvious choice that he clearly at some point has to make but he never does it they never they they never you know but yeah just stuff to have characters interact stuff where you know make it so that Roxanne isn't the only glam rock with any personality like Monty and Chica had basically like Monty's personality was that he was angry and Chica's personality was that she was hungry <laughs> it was nothing it was so much opportunity for interactions between the character and having them I don't know I yeah I mean I could I I, I could just sit here and complain for an hour but I don't want to I mean there was good stuff you know you know, and I could say good stuff too. I like the office. I really like the office sections. I thought I, I like that they were they were different without being, the same. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> they, like like they built on existing mechanics while having each one, be something different. Is what I mean. And I I liked the Gregory, Freddy interactions. I liked, their personalities and how they related to each other um i just wish that there was more of like every other character and you know especially more vanessa you know it's like you go through these therapy tapes and it's like okay well this is cool but i don't care because i who is this who, who like like i like like oh wow what a twist this person killed some killed killed her therapists and it's like okay but who is she like i don't like oh oh th th that 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 you remember that person from like f ten hours ago, who <laughs> she she skipped around and said are you having fun yet and then she fucked off forever, yeah it's her oh okay, and and, uh, and then you're not even supposed to know that her name is Vanny but they refer to her as Vanny multiple times you're not supposed to f find out her name until the very end, but then they just refer to her by her name before you learn it, multiple times, and it was dumb. And yeah, I like I I mean I like I liked some of the endings. I liked I liked Gregory and Freddy. Uh, you know, some of the self sections were okay. A lot of the game kind of felt too easy, or I don't know if easy is it, but like just like these sections where you're just running from place to place with like nothing. Like it's just okay. It's just you're just traveling. You're just going from area one to area two, and like I don't know. I th I think adding in the vanny meter would have been good. Because it would have meant that it does it doesn't feel like you're just completely safe is it is what I'm trying to say you just there were there was so many sections where I just felt totally safe like nothing could kill me which I should I shouldn't be feeling that in a horror game yeah make Vanny more relevant remove burn trap make the glam rocks do more stuff G give us the give us the Roxy Raceway mini game <laughs> let let us actually race D and stop soft locking me. <laughs> You know, I could I could make a video where I say all that, but I don't want to. Do I have any other thoughts? Um, um, what is what is that? Like that's that's not like that's Molten Freddy, but like he died, so I don't know where he's how he got here. But he looks like Gertie from the Binding of Isaac. Yeah, that's 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 yeah. And like I said, I could I could make a full review, but um, I'd rather do. I'd rather work on Zapcat and do school work. You know, if I, if I didn't have school. All right. Yep. All right. I'm done. See you on the flip side. Renee the Fox signing out.